Isn't it great to be here? I, I'm sure that everyone is getting an awful lot of information and great camaraderie and great spirit, a lot of sharing and exchanging of energy uh, because I know I am. Um, I have to tell you that I'm really about five feet off the floor right now hearing all these great presentations. Um, and so I hope that my little bit can help add to uh, the research that's been done and the information that's coming forth. First, I want to thank the committee for inviting me here to participate. I believe it is an honor and a privilege to address this wide, diverse body of African people from all over the country and perhaps uh, outside of uh, the country. First thing I want to do is um, call upon the memory of one of the great geniuses of black music, Rasan Roland Kirk. Rasan performed a piece which he wrote entitled Blackness some years ago. I have a interpretation of what that meant to me. And I want to share this little poem that I wrote uh, to some classical black music. B-L-A-C-K-N-U-S-S, blackness, B-L-A-C-K-N-U-S-S, blackness, B-L-A-C-K-N-U-S-S, blackness was the beginning, blackness shall be the ending, blackness is between reality and a dream, blackness appears when the sun disappears from view, blackness is where we descend for our minds and spirits to renew. Can you remember the blackness of the womb? Do you know that you were a flower getting ready to bloom? Descend, rise, descend, rise, descend, rise, 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 rise in blackness. Thank you. My presentation is going to be um, kind of interesting and I, I'm looking forward, I hope I get your indulgence because uh, no one hasn't heard this before except a few close friends of mine, uh, one Dr. Carl Spite, many of you may know, uh, we've gone back and forth over this and he even told me that it's one of the most exciting things that uh, he's heard, especially since one of his professors was one of the persons who introduced the term soliton some years ago, and he was thought as, still is, as someone way out in the netherworld of science. So what I'm going to present to you, I haven't done this publicly, so um, I want you to understand that this is a metaphor, and metaphors our organizing principles to get us to understand ourselves at deeper and deeper levels. All physical theory is nothing but metaphor. When you get down to the nitty gritty, that's all it is, is an attempt to describe our environment. Whether you're talking about a charge of an electron or some mathematical principle, even a psychological principle, even religion and myth. All of those are metaphors to organize how we interact with ourselves, each other, and the environment. So in that sense, that's what I'm presenting here. And with the hope that it can help fine tune a lot of our assumptions that we, that we have because we come up in a society that is not um, 
conducive to our way of, of living, of thinking, of behaving. So with, with that, I just want to introduce to you, you know, what this is, because um, it's sometimes it gets a little esoteric. Um, in fact, um, it would be a major epistemic break with contemporary Cartesian Western science way of looking at reality. Uh, many people, including many theologians, will have problems with what I have to say. Notwithstanding, many scientists will have problems with what I have to say. But I'm going to say it anyway. You know, so, just bear with me. Um, first, I'm going to start, uh, first slide please, giving you um, some information about melanin that, that is very hard to find in the literature. These are special properties of melanin. We heard a lot about the chemical nature, but there are some other things about melanin that really makes it a very unique um, molecule, organizing molecule, molecule to be more specific. Um, the first thing, it is a two-section paracrystalline polymer. What does that mean? That a crystal such as quartz or salt has a regular ordered pattern, but melanin is amorphous, that it has a disordered pattern, but that disorder makes for its uniqueness. Okay, now I want you to understand that I'm going to introduce some words that, that we normally have a negative connotation of, such as disorder. You know, Rosalind talked about when she talked about leg bar, you know, the function of disorder. Uh, you look at comedic life ways, you see Seth. You know, he represents disorder, but for a purpose. So disorder is very important towards the evolution and elevation of our own consciousness. Because within disorder you find what? Order. But we have to focus our attentions on that order within the disorder. Do y'all understand that? Does that make any sense? <laughs> so, I need someone to open that up. So, melanin, with its two tiered structure, has an optical absorption spectrum that is constant from the near infrared to 400 nanometers, which is getting down in the blue range. But then it dramatically rises in efficiency in the ultraviolet range. One part of the planar stacks are tuned to absorb the visible spectrum, and its core is tuned to absorb ultraviolet light and high energy alpha rays, beta rays, and gamma rays. Okay, so it's tuned to absorb and later we'll see transform these different forms of electromagnetic energy. Melanin from X-ray diffraction studies, we find that it contains many different metal ions. An ion is simply an atom minus the electrons, such as, in this, as far as melanin's case, zinc, copper, iron, and a whole host of others. Furthermore, melanin exhibits ultra-weak chemical and photo-induced chemical luminescence. Now what does that mean? That simply means that when a light particle strikes a melanin molecule, it generates an electron which in turn generates light itself or sound called phonons. Even when the melanin molecule is destroyed, it is still capable of protecting the cell. And uh, one of the things that um, um, Dr. McGee, uh, in his brochure anyway, he mentioned that uh, it's so stable, is it God? Well, we're going to come to that a little later on about the significance of its stability. Melanin has a thermal activation energy of from 0.93 to 0.104 electron volts. Now that's a very small amount of energy it takes to 
cause a reaction. Very, very smart. I'm going to show you the significance of that in a few minutes. Melanin is super paramagnetic. Okay, we're all familiar with magnetism. We've all had experience with magnets. You put the North Poles together and they'll fly apart. You put North and South and they'll come together. Well, that's called ferromagnetism, which simply means that um, two structures, two elements that have a certain order will tend to come together. Okay, then you have the opposite called diamagnetism, which means two other elements will tend to push themselves apart. Then you have paramagnetism, which simply means that there is a small affinity between two different elements. Okay, a small affinity. Then you have super paramagnetism, which simply means that the that the affinity for attraction is close to but not the same intensity as something that's ferromagnetic. So that's very significant uh, in the fact that uh, of, of those magnetic qualities. Melanin is an energy converter. Photon, electron, phonon transformation and back. But also um, Melanin is insoluble to ordinary solvents. In fact, the true structure of that molecule still remains unknown. Even with X-ray diffraction and a whole lot of other spectrographic techniques, the true structure is unknown. Perhaps with uh, some neutron, high energy neutron diffraction studies, uh, we may get a chance to pierce that darkness to see uh, what the light looks like. We will probably find that there are some other important elements which uh, gives it um, this structure which, which uh, recently uh, they're calling uh, a super atom state. And that simply means that uh, we're talking about um, mesoscopic particles. Now, now what does that mean? Well, you have micro, which means something very small, you have macro, which means something that's very large, and then you have everything in between, which is called meso. So atoms themselves, or micro and other subatomic particles, molecules are macro, and everything that you can, really everything that you can see larger than a molecule is macro, that you can visibly see. You can't visibly see an electron, you can only see um, uh, the absence of it. But then you have this center thing that they call mesoscopic materials. And um, these objects, and I'm going to read this. This is from Science News, November 1986. Um, a Japanese physicist uh, said that it should be possible to synthetically make such a structure as a super atom. That is, a molecule that is so stable that it takes on the form of a natural element <laughs> like oxygen or iron, okay, that, that they said they can create a molecule that has the same stability, okay. And now we're going to see how melanin fits in this, in this uh, equation, I, I think anyway. Okay, it says uh, one such possibility is the superatom, a structure made of semiconductor materials that behaves as if it was a giant atom. Okay, when we look at melanin, we find that because of its amorphous structure and because it has many different uh, metals, that it acts like a super, it acts as a semiconductor. Okay? that it can change its conductivity state depending upon the input of energy. And that's a semiconductor is nothing but uh, the technical term for a transistor. And that simply means that um, you, can have, you can have a structure, <coughs> quickly draw this, you can have something, I'll just draw a box. This is input here, this is 
out. And then this is control. Okay. This is control point. And so you want you want energy to come through, but if you have a lot coming through, you want to have some way to prevent all this to come through. And so